everyone. So I thought I'd put together a few slides just to go through this topic of naming salts. Some of you did very well when you did this and handed in your work for me, and some of you found it a little bit more tricky, which is fine. It is quite straightforward, but it just takes a little bit of getting used to at the beginning in terms of where these names come from. One thing I would also like to mention, just to make it clear, is when we are thinking about salt in our everyday life, and this is where science in our everyday life can get a bit muddled, we often just think of table salt. So table salt, what we put on our food, is an example of a type of salt. Its name is sodium chloride. But in chemistry, there are many, many more. And we're going to have a look at some examples of those. So just bear that in mind when you're thinking about the word, that it doesn't just mean the table salt you use on your food. So as we know, mixing acids and alkalis together causes a neutralization reaction. And this is where the acid and the alkali react together and they form a neutral solution. And throughout this PowerPoint, I have used the red, blue and green colors just to kind of highlight using the ideas from the pH scale, what we're talking about. So here we've got an example of a reaction. So we have a solution which has gone red in universal indicator and a solution that is blue. And when we react them together, we get our neutral solution, which is green. And underneath is the general equation. So this hasn't got any specific names. There's not a name of an actual type of acid. It just says acid and the same for alkali and then salt and water. So whenever there's an acid and an alkali that react together, then you have the arrow. You know that there will be a salt and water. What we need to be able to do is to figure out the name of that salt. And to do that, we need to look at the names of the acids and the alkalis and figure it out. In this case, hydrochloric acid has reacted with sodium hydroxide to form sodium chloride plus water. Water is produced every single time. It's always the same. And these reactions follow the same pattern. And for those of you that are happy with symbol equations, that's written underneath. So hydrochloric acid is HCl. Remember that all acids contain hydrogen. And sodium hydroxide is NaOH. We're only going to be using hydroxides as our examples of alkalis throughout this. There are others, but we'll keep it simple for now. What we need to do now is be able to work out how we know the name of this reaction for the salt is sodium chloride. So what we need to do is we need to have a look at the names of the chemicals that make the salt. In this case, we've got hydrochloric acid and we've got sodium hydroxide. And when these two react, we end up with a salt called sodium chloride. So if you have a look at the name sodium chloride, hopefully you'll be able to see that sodium comes from sodium hydroxide. So the name of the metal, which is sodium, from the alkali, which is sodium hydroxide, forms the first part of the salt's name. The second part of the name comes from the type of acid that's been used. In this case, hydrochloric acid. And hydrochloric acid always makes salts which have got chloride in the name. So this slide goes through the three most common acids that we use in science. In your work that you handed in, you also had citric acid but these are the three most common ones that we most often use. So this slide shows you with each acid what type of salt it makes. So hydrochloric acid always makes a salt with chloride in the second part of its name. The blue line there represents a blank. Now we can't fill in this blank because we don't know the name of the alkali that was involved in this reaction, but we'd be able to fill that in if we knew more information. Sulfuric acid always makes sulfate, and nitric acid always makes salts with nitrate in the second part of its name. And citric acid, like in the worksheet, always makes salts with citrate in the second part of its name. Now you might notice a pattern in terms of the names that they often end in A-T-E, sulfate, nitrate, citrate. It's not always the case, and hydrochloric acid is an exception, but it is quite commonly the case. So that's something just to watch out for when you're doing your own work. 
So here's another slide which just goes through this in a bit more detail. So showing that sodium hydroxide gives the salt the name sodium and hydrochloric acid, because it always makes chlorides, gives the salt name chloride. So we end up with sodium chloride. And the symbols are the same. So the Na for sodium comes from sodium hydroxide and the Cl for chloride comes from the hydrochloric acid. Here, we've got a different example. So we've now got potassium hydroxide. So the name of the metal here from the alkali is potassium. And sulfuric acid always makes sulfates. So here, we've got potassium sulfate. So let's have a go at doing some practice questions. These are the same as the ones that were in the original slideshow. But I'm just going to go through these nice and slowly so we can see where the names come from. So in the first one, and this one has jumbled up the names, so they are in a different order, so don't get muddled up by this. So we've got lithium hydroxide, should recognise that a hydroxide is an alkali, so that one's first, and we've got hydrochloric acid. So what we need to do is figure out the name of the salt, and water has already been done for us in this example. So first thing to do is find out the name of the metal that is going to form the first part of the name of the salt. So hopefully you will have all spotted it. There is lithium from lithium hydroxide. So the first part of the salt name is going to be lithium. The second part of the name comes from the type of acid that's been used. And in this case, we've got hydrochloric acid. And if you remember back to the previous slide, hydrochloric acid always makes salts with chloride in the name. So the name of the salt is lithium chloride. You'll notice here that I've used the same coloration as I have in the previous parts of this little presentation. So everything to do with the acid is highlighted in red. Everything to do with the alkali is highlighted in blue to match up with the colours from our pH scale. The second example, we are needing to work backwards. So we've got the name of the alkali, calcium oxide. And if we have a look at the name of the metal, calcium, we'll notice that the salt has also got the name calcium in it, calcium nitrate. Now, the second part of the salt's name, nitrate, that comes from the name of the acid. So we need to work backwards and remember what type of acid makes salts with nitrate in the name. Can you remember? Well done, it is nitric acid. Notice the change in the spelling of the names. We've got nitric acid, and we've got nitrate salt. That's important to recognise to make sure that you can do it correctly. So those were a couple of examples. I'm going to move on to the next slide now and here are some more. So for each of these you need to name the salt that is formed from the pairs of chemicals written down here. So there's five examples. Sulfuric acid plus sodium hydroxide. Number two, sulfuric acid plus potassium hydroxide. Number three, nitric acid plus potassium hydroxide. Number four, citric acid plus magnesium hydroxide. And number five, hydrochloric acid plus calcium hydroxide. So have a go at figuring out the names of these salts. What I'd recommend that you do is you pause the presentation so it doesn't skip onto the next slide where I'm going to run through the answers. And then when you're finished, you can restart the slideshow. So the answers are coming up next. If you haven't managed to press pause yet, now would be a good time to escape from the presentation so you can have a go at those previous questions before going on to the answers on the next slide. So here are the answers. I've highlighted the acids and the alkalis in the same colours as before so you can see where the names have come from. So the first one, the salt name is sodium sulphate. So first part of its name, sodium, comes from the alkali, sodium hydroxide, and the second part of the name, sulphate, comes from the type of acid. And if you remember, sulfuric acid always makes sulphates. Number two, again, we've got the first part of the name from the alkali, so potassium sulphate, because we've got potassium hydroxide. And then we've got sulfuric acid again, so we end up with a sulphate salt, potassium sulphate. Third one, we're using potassium hydroxide again, so the name of the salt starts with potassium, just like it did for number two. 
And then the second part, the name, comes from nitric acid, and nitric acid always makes nitrate salts. Number four, this was the acid that came up in your worksheet that we didn't really cover in the original presentation. So citric acid, and that always makes citrate salts. So the name of this salt is magnesium citrate. Magnesium from the magnesium hydro hydroxide, and then citrate from citric acid. And the last one, hydrochloric acid plus calcium hydroxide will make a salt, calcium chloride. Calcium from the calcium hydroxide and chloride because hydrochloric acid always makes chlorides. So well done for giving this a go. Hopefully you got some or all of these right. If you didn't, don't worry. What I'd suggest is if you found these a bit tricky still, come back in a day or two or maybe next week and give it another go. With this, it really is just practice makes perfect. Getting used to where the name comes from, the different parts of the name and putting it together. Just remember, if this was a question asking you to do the full equation, there is something missing from the product side of these at the moment, which is, that's right, you'd need to have plus water after each one because water is also a product of all of these reactions all of the time. Thanks everyone. Thank you for listening. Thank you for taking part. I hope it was helpful. If it was, by all means, give me a thumbs up. If you feel that these narrated slides are useful and you would like me to do more and there is something that you'd really like me to go through because you found it a bit tricky as we've gone through the topic, then please just message me and let me know. Um, I will continue to try and give feedback based on the work that you're sending me and what I notice about those bits that you might be finding a little bit hard. Um, it's been nice for me to speak to you guys from over here. I know you can't see me and I can't see you, but I hope you're all well and I hope you are managing to find time within the lockdown to be creative, relax, connect with each other and stay safe. Thank you. Bye.